Boom. All right. Hey, 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 guys. This is your chat to a new show with Ivy, the lovely and beautiful Ivy over there, and myself, Keisha, with UncommonChick.com. And we are, actually, this is our first episode over here on Blab. Yes. It's pretty exciting. I know, I know. Um, we were previously hosting the show over on Google Hangouts. However, uh, if you've been on Google Hangouts, you kind of know some issues. And, you know, this interface is just way... Thank you. Day tripping, yes. Way, uh, you know, complicated sometimes, especially when we have guests and all of that good stuff. But we are here and I'm loving it. So we are ready to rock and roll. And tonight we are talking about breaking the rules of wellness coaching, how we redefine the whole space and, and kind of what we're doing and let you know what that's all about. But before we do that, just want to let you guys know this is an interactive show which means we want you to chime in whenever you, you know, have an opportunity to. And because we're on Blab, we have two extra seats. So if you want to pop in your lovely <laughs> place to chime in, let us know <laughs> as we go forward to discuss what we're talking about. And so Ivy, we are chat chew and you still, what do you have chewing? Um, oh, I'm so excited. I've got, um, one of my favorite, uh, I'm going to try not to dump it like I've done before in some of my other shows. <laughs> but, um, okay, can you all see that? I have um, some cantaloupe over here. And I'm telling you, because these are, I'm getting my last dose of all the summer fruits and veggies. So I'm like, okay, eat it, eat it, eat it, take it all in because we're getting ready to go into fall. So, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Cool. What about you? Well, I have some cashews sitting here on my desk. Um, I had a bigger lunch, so my evening meal is going to be light. So I got some cashews to snack on. I got my water with me. And afterwards, you know, it was like I didn't want to bring a whole plate of food, so I'll be like this in front of y'all while I'm talking. <laughs> so, you know, I just snack on my cashews for now to get done. But, uh, but yeah, so that's what I have, and I got my water with me. I'm a little behind today, so I'll get that in. But, um, yeah, so... Um, Redefining wellness coaching. Ivy, you ready? I am. I'm excited. <laughs> um, I mean, we could tackle this from a lot of different ways. I mean, we could really talk about this all day, especially with other wellness professionals, I'm sure. But tonight, we're going to be just diving in on kind of what we do in our different areas of expertise and how we are looking at the wellness industry, what we are doing with our own clients, and you know how we are trying to change the game a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, yes. How should we start? Do we define wellness, or uh, like how do we want to do that? I guess to redefine it, how do we define it? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for me, like the approach that I took when when I was thinking about the topic and how I wanted to share this with the audience is that um, I kind of looked at it at, from a point of compare and contrast. Um, and I think that that helps people understand a little bit more like what, when you say difference, what that difference is. So, um, you know, when you think of, let's talk about when you think of wellness now, like what do we see in the typical media, what do we see in society when we think of wellness and what comes up for people when they think of wellness. And, you know, one of the first things that comes up for me is um, dieting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, I think a lot of people, you know, even when people approach me, at, well, not now, because they understand my brand a little bit better. But at the beginning, when you say coaching, the first Thing they used to approach me about was yeah because I know I need to lose this weight and that was the first thing that they would say to me and I'm like I didn't expect that I, you know I don't have those expectations of you but it's like they they kind of um open the conversation with that as if they're expecting me to already be uh judging them um because those are the messages that when you think of wellness those are the messages that are put put out there exactly I agree have you, so, have, what have you seen? Um, have people approached you and what do they already have in their mind when they're, when they talk wellness to you? The, it's two things. 
uh, diet and exercise. Yeah. Those yeah. are two things that, that, that are for, at the forefront of what people are thinking about when they hear wellness or health or fitness or anything along those lines. And in my opinion, those are the last two things that we should worry about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the last two things. So, um, yeah. So in defining wellness in general, in a lot of people's minds, they, they do think, Oh, okay, well, that just means I need to eat right and exercise. Well, everybody knows that. And why is it such a big problem? First yeah. and foremost, right? So we know it doesn't start there. Yeah, it may end there. It may be part of your plan, but it doesn't start there. So, all right. So what are we talking about? Now, let's redefine that. Let's redefine wellness in general. And then we can talk about well, maybe some strategies and things that we use and what we do. Okay. For ourselves and other people. <laughs> Well, you know me. I have my five. Like for some reason, I default to five. Like I have my <laughs> five. Things. I have my five things that came to mind when I think of um, what makes me different as a wellness coach for people. Um, one of the first thing, and I think I'll just share them, and then we can kind of dialogue around them and you see if okay. it resonates with you. Um, <laughs> so she like odd numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I like the number five. You know what? Maybe it's a visual thing because, like, five and it has like a little round, like a little belly. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, look at five. <laughs> I'll let you have that. I'll let you have that one. <laughs> oh, man. It was crazy. So, my number one <laughs> is that for me, well, Wellness coaching is about connecting um, rather than controlling. And, and um, by that, I mean teaching people to connect with their bodies rather than, um, and I don't even want to say teaching, but supporting people and connecting with their bodies rather than controlling them. And I think that that makes me different. And I know you feel the same way that a lot of coaches or a lot of people feel like wellness or health is about, oh, I got to get this um, appetite under control. I got to get this body under control, you know, or, or whatever it is about themselves that they're trying to control rather than connecting with the body. So that's my first thing that comes up. What, how does that feel for you? What, how do you feel about that? I'm with you. I agree. Um, it, it goes back into, like I said, redefining what it means in people's heads when we get ready to talk with them, you know, mm -hmm. the, the whole pre and post. I like the idea because then at the end or the end of the beginning <laughs> or the beginning of the end or whatever, for when they get done, you know, it's about how do they, how do they now define wellness after they've been in our space? Right. So hopefully it's a different version of themselves and ho hopefully a different vision that they have so that they can look and see that it's not just that one area or one thing. Right, right. Um, the, another thing that, that comes up for me is, and this I had comes from Akila, curiosity Woo -woo. rather than judgment. All these are C's. Just in case you didn't notice. But oh my God, we got fives and C's. Okay. All right. Five and C's. So we got a curve in the front and a curve in the back. So we got five C's. I know what to get you for your birthday. Something with a five in it and some C's. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. The five C's and redefining web. So let's change this title. It's all about the curve up in this conversation today. <laughs> And I didn't even think about it until now, right? Like, <laughs> um, my second, yeah, curiosity rather than judgment. So, you know, um, when things come up for us around our bodies and our lives and the things that we do and our habits and the choices that we make, rather than judging ourselves, because a lot of programs out there are like, you know, oh, you did that, now you have to do this. Oh, you ate that, now you have to run 50 miles, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, oh, you didn't make this number on the scale. Well, now you, you get 500 fewer calories. You know, it's, it's the, it's um, a punishment or a judgment mindset rather than the curiosity. And in applying that um, with the curiosity, you ask the why, why is it that this week your um, maybe your appetite was stronger or why is it that this week, you know, taking away from food and exercise, why is it that you were more tired or, you know, in, in emotional 
um, and our emotional health. Why is it that this week you're more tired or you lack energy or you don't really feel as social, you know, rather than saying, oh, God, you need to stop being so lazy. Like, what's, what's wrong with you? Asking more why for me. I agree. We rolling. <laughs> um, Akila says making it about the person inside the body instead of bashing and blaming the body itself. Preach. Yes. <laughs> I wish I could like put this up here so y'all can see. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so yeah, ask asking the why. Um okay. got the why, okay. The next thing that came up for me was compassion rather Ooh, than yeah. shame. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess that aligns with um, almost the curiosity rather than judgment, but um, having compassion. Hi, Shanice. I had to pause for that. <laughs> <laughs> having um, compassion around our bodies rather than shame. And um, for me, because I'm the body relationship coach, I default to bodies, but in wellness, um, all the way around, so mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. Um, you know, I hear so many people say, like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I'm like that. You know, I just wish I wasn't like that. And so much shame comes to the table. Have you experienced that? Yeah, all the time. And it, and it's, I mean, we could talk for days about why, right? Yeah. I mean, part of it is just our society and everything we're pressured about, especially as women. Everything we're pressured about in terms of how we need to be, what we need to eat, what we need to look like, you know, you know how, what sexy is and what we can't do, what we're not supposed to, what we're supposed to do, all that stuff. We're so pressured into that. We don't know what the heck to do. So yeah. <laughs> a lot of times it's like, bump it. I'm just going to do whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that may not be the healthiest thing. Yeah, yeah, we we like give up on our because of the shame, it's like this vicious cycle, right? Because yep. you have the shame, and then because of the shame, you have the disconnection from yourself or your your body or whatever. You say, you know what, like you said, I just I give up, and then you have more um destructive behaviors or um maybe deviant behaviors or whatever, because then you instead of showing yourself love you're kind of reacting to yourself from a, inner, a negative energy or energy of hate. And then your choices come from that space. But when we embrace compassion, then we can start to, um, we make room for practicing compassion in every choice that we make in every area of our lives. You know what I found, speaking of compassion, just as a, as a side note, um, I've read a lot about compassion previously. It's one of the things I talk about as well. And I find it easier to have compassion for others. Mm. And a lot of us can have, yeah. you know, a lot, first of all, when we know what it is, right? First, when we know what compassion is, and then we start to learn how to have compassion for other people. I had to learn that, first of all, in understanding a situation I, I was in, like, how can I turn this around? Can compassion help? Let's try that. And it's like, okay, well, why is it so easy for me to have compassion for someone else? And I'm over here berating and being negative and all this stuff with my own self, judging and having all this other stuff, but I couldn't find compassion for myself. And so I think mm -hmm. that's one of the harder things for a lot of people to do. Uh, and that's why we are here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's hard. It really is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. And then that makes me want to ask the why. This is definitely yep, my new thing. Why. <laughs> the why, like, why is it that we um, default to the compassion for others, but we um, default to the judgment for our, for ourselves? Um, if any of y'all in the chat box have any ideas around why that happens, or if you've experienced why you tend to judge yourself, or you think that maybe you're more compassionate with others when you've experienced that, I'd love to hear. Because um, I just have a curiosity around why. One, we're not taught anything mm -hmm. that has to do with lifestyle or uh, personal uh, health, I would say. Uh, people pleasing. Yes, that's one. That's a good one. Um, and it even goes deeper than that, though. I mean, think about it. So I'm a people pleaser. I'm a recovering people pleaser, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say recovering. <laughs> Uh, people pleasing, right? So yeah. what does that mean? Let's ask a why to that. Why? What's underneath wanting to be a people pleaser? 
well, mm. we want people to like us. We want to be, you know, belong in different groups. We want all of this stuff. And then let's ask another why. How can we go further than that to really understand the root of our beliefs? You know, so uh, don't like ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Where does that come from? That's another why. Why is that? Oh, my God. I love the why rabbit hole. Right? Dig with that why. Right. Dig. Dig. <laughs> Love it, love it. Oh, All right, Akila, you want to read it? <laughs> Akila got some goodness here. Akila says because when we judge other people, society says we should feel guilt. I'm gonna read that one more time. Hold on. Okay, because when we judge other people, society says we should feel guilt. But when we judge ourselves, society said we're involved in self improvement. Mm -hmm. But if it's if it's based on guilt, there's a why again. Is it improvement? Mm. All right, so you know what? Um, I'm gonna need you to come on in here with us. And <laughs> hi, Shanice, nice to meet you. We got the ladies coming in with us because y'all got some goodness here. Ivy, do you mind? No, <laughs> come on, step up to the seat. Ah, <laughs> uh, why it's hard to be compassionate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, I mean, again, that could be a whole nother show, dude. All your videos wonky. Aww. Aww. But that, that's a deep thought because when you think of, um, society says that when we jump, judge ourselves, that it's a form of self improvement. So it's like, oh, that's so deep. Yes. It's so it's accepted because if you're improving yourself, then it's okay. But like she said, if you're if you're judging yourself, is it really self improvement? Like, yeah, yeah. If it's not coming from a space of love, um, is it really wellness? Right? Is it really wellness if it's not coming from a space of love? And I think that aligns with our conversation today. Yeah, that's a, we got. We write that down. That's that could be a whole other topic for another day. <laughs> <laughs> is it coming from a space of love? Um, yes, yes, yes. David, I know you wanted to hop on too. So if you want to hop on, feel free to step up to the um the seat. Get in on the hot seat, David. <laughs> All um, right, Ivy, what do you have next? What's number? Was number that was number three? What's number four? Number four, I had current acceptance rather than conditional embrace. Okay, and um, for that my meaning and you all can tell me whether this resonates for you or not but um <clears throat> and when i'm coaching someone in wellness i'm trying to i'm coaching them in um embracing who they are as a person today right now in this moment and rather than waiting for conditional embrace Meaning, uh, um, well, if I do this, if I accomplish this, then I'll be happy with myself or then I'll love myself or then I can embrace who I am. But um, in current acceptance, accepting ourselves who we, with, as who we are today, it allows us to operate from that space of love. And when you are in that space of love, then that motivates every single decision that you make. So whether it be um, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whether you decide what you're eating or when you rest or who you're in a relationship with or how, what type of money, how you invest your money, whatever decision you make, it's coming from a space of, I love myself and so I'm going to do this or I'm going to make this choice. But typical wellness or, or, or a lot of wellness um, messages out there are, well, when I get to whatever it is, this size, this space, this, yep. this social status, then I can celebrate who I am. I, you know, and there's a whole paradigm shift that needs to happen when it comes to how to turn that around. And it's, we're going to have to learn to transform that. Those who are willing to do the work because it is work. Everybody wants a quick fix. Everybody wants something fast and in a hurry. And, you know, yeah, we wanted it yesterday, but it didn't take a day or so for us to get to where we are. We've had since birth learning all the messages and the beliefs that we have. So it's not going to be a one time thing where it's like, okay, I'm good now. I wake up tomorrow. I love myself and I'm perfect. 
Right. Uh, no, boo. That is not going to happen. <laughs> that is not going to happen. So, yeah. It, and But if we start to look at it that way and start to understand that that's where we want to be, then the journey of getting there, I think, would be fun. Right. I'll get back to that one because that was one of mine is the, is the fun part. But, yeah, we can get back to that. So is that so like embracing the journey? I'm getting it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yes. Is yes. That the same as embracing a journey. Embracing the journey because it's not about the end. Mm -hmm. It's not about the destination. Our destination mm -hmm. is going to be, you know, six feet under or in fire, whichever one you want to do. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, that's the destination. How about the journey before we get there? How how much of a uh, how much quality is that going to be for us? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm on right now. <laughs> what can I do to make my before and after, the between of the before and after, awesome? That's all I want. That's all I want. Oh, my God. Okay. Jay Jones says, sometimes bad habits become safe. OMG. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, oh, Jay Jones. Male or female, I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I love that you said that, though, because bad habits, our current comfort zones, or what have you. Actually, I just wrote about that, how our comfort zones are not as comfortable as we think, right? But it's what we know, and it's where we stay, because any movement is going to cause us um, uncertainty, is going to cause us, and then we know we're afraid of uncertainty, we don't know what's going to happen next. Then yeah. it's like, well, you know what? I know what's going to happen right now. I'm just going to remain as I am. Nothing's yeah. going to change. Nothing's going to change. Yeah. Or if we don't think about it, though, if you don't change, something is changing. It's just probably not as radical as you may think a new change would be. For instance, if I were to continue down the same eating path I'm on right now, I know where that's going to lead. It may feel comfortable right now because I know, like, you know, everything I'm doing right now is cool, but if I decide to do something different, I have no clue what's going to happen because it's new and it's different to me. Mm -hmm. But yes, it is safe to to maintain the habits that we have because it's work to do something different. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes work, but we get up and go to somebody else's work job and do their work every single day. Well, a lot of people <laughs> do that. So we're already doing work. Why not make it positive work? Why, why not make it a concerted effort to do the work that would benefit us? Yeah, and okay. go ahead, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say that I've seen clients that I've worked with, and we, you know, when you start out with the assessment, you talk about okay, who are you now? And then you talk about okay, where do you want to go? What are your goals? And they talk about, you know, the goals, and then when you start saying, Okay, so what is it that stopped you in the past from moving forward? And almost the resounding reply is fear. And like what you're saying is there's this trust factor of if I leave this space and, you know, I take the risk of moving forward and evolving, then I have to trust that that evolution is going to be better than where I am now. And so there's this risk of at least I know, like you said, at least I know where I am now. And it's, it's almost a thing of even if I'm in this space that I hate, and I'm miserable and I'm, you know, I'm unhappy and I can't stand it. At least I know it. And there's yeah. something about being in that space that, you know, that, um, that holds people prisoner because it's what if I move forward and, and I don't know what to do. I don't have the tools. It's a new space. I have to navigate. I have to learn how to be in that space. I have to learn how the rules go there. You know, yeah. I've never been there before. So it's, and, and, Again, this is definitely not coming from a space of judgment. For me, it's coming from a space of understanding because I've been there. Like I, we I are, yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. If you've had any evolution, then you've been there where it's like, oh, I really want to go there, but oh, <laughs> <laughs> like if, if I go there, then like I don't know what's gonna happen. But like, you know, how am I? How am I gonna govern myself? Who am I? What What am I gonna do? How am I gonna survive? Uh, you know, are my needs going to be met? You know, all of those things come up for us when we think of moving into a different space, any kind of space, whether it's, you know, um, 
food, exercise, relationship, our careers, um, any of that stuff, all of those questions come up. I agree. I agree. I agree. All right, David. We're being scared. <laughs> yeah, I'm like reading his David's comments over here. <laughs> He says, I would rather eat whatever the hell I want to further my journey. I feel bad for friends who are perpetually on a diet. They're usually grumpy from the lack of nutrients. Right. Okay. They're mad. They're mad. Okay. Okay. So then this is where the the fun part comes in for me because most of everything I do, I got to have some fun, right? So if I am doing something that's not making me... I don't even use the word happy. I'm going to say it's not pleasurable. Then one, how long am I going to do it? It's not going to be sustaining, right? Number two, it I'm going to quit. It's, it's not there's there's no motivation for me to do something I don't like. Who wants to do something they don't like? Who wants to? Not to say we we are not doing it, but who wants to? Nobody. So when we when we think about that perpetually on a diet, boo. <laughs> That's a boo. Where's the fun? Where's the, you know, laughter yoga? Let's throw some of that in there. Where's the, you know, <laughs> doing stuff or finding ways to make it interesting, pleasurable, enjoyable, sexy, all of that good stuff. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yeah, David, I'm not one of those friends, by the way. So, <laughs> so if we're if we're talking about um, being in that space where you're you're on a perpetual diet, right? That's like the conversation that we had earlier there you're in that space because that's what you know and um that's what you've done and no one has come and said hey did you know that you could try this and that's where we come in as wellness coaches who are are um redefining wellness coaching and saying you know what there's an alternative to that because i will tell you guys my witness that for a, the I was on the diet roller coaster for decades. I never ever thought about the fact that there was an alternative to dieting. Like I mean, yeah. it's just like dieting is what you do is what everybody does. You know, you if you're not the right weight, then you diet perpetually. I mean, it never occurred to me that you don't have to diet in order to be happy because. Those are the messages that I got from everywhere, everywhere, everyone around me. And no one ever told me that I didn't have to diet. Now, when I found those people who told me that, then it opened up my mind to a whole new level with the body positive approach and all of that. And then I was able to embrace it. But until that message came to me, I never considered it. So perhaps a lot of people just have never been offered that freedom of saying that there's another way and that's what we're here for right yes yeah um i like okay shine says i used to be comfortable with dysfunction and had to learn that being comfortable is overrated little by little i gained more moral courage i like that you said little by little mm -hmm. because that's what it's going to take Little by little, for anybody who's making any type of change, uh, it's going to be little by little. And I think what a lot of people look at is, okay, so in two weeks from now, I'm going to my high school reunion and I got to lose 80 pounds by the end. <laughs> right. That's one of the first things, you know, people are thinking about when it comes to what, oh, yeah, I'm going to be you know, fit and fine. No, I'm going to be fine. I fit because I don't know what you're going to do to lose 80 pounds in two weeks. But, you know, like what, what the heck? I mean, you know, so when you're thinking that way. And you want to do so much at one time, you are going to crap out, and it's not going to be pretty. So, little by little, yes. <laughs> That's an awesome, awesome, awesome approach from um, Janice. Uh, did I get my number five? Okay, so my number five is um, coaching rather than training. Now. Okay. <laughs> the reason right. that I say this, and I love dialogue, so you all can tell me how you feel about it, is that as a coach, I believe that the answers 
to your questions and the answers to what you need is already inside of you, that what you need is already inside of you and that it's my um, calling and mission um, to help coach you to getting to that point and to tapping into those answers and that power that's already there. Um, and I feel that that makes me different because a lot of coaches or wellness coaches or whatever, their approach is, I'm going to teach you, you know, A, B, and C. I'm going to train you, blah, blah, blah. And what that is, is that that's taking a curriculum that's cookie cutter and putting it over here on, on you and expecting you to adopt it and then put it into your life and it's supposed to work and you're supposed to excel. Well, no, I believe in, you know, tapping into your own intuitive voice, tapping into your intuition, tapping into your spirit and your heart, tapping into um, creator, um, you know, tapping into your body signals. I I'm here to coach you which means that you're on the, you know, if you think of sports, you're out there playing the game. I'm on the sidelines helping you tap into your power for you to win. That's your game. You got it. Like you can play it, but I'm just here to coach you through the game. So that's how I feel that my approach is different in that area. What about you? As you were talking, the very thing that came to mind was um, when you – coach the way you just mentioned mm -hmm. you're giving them power ah. um, my niece and i were <laughs> my niece and i yesterday were talking about uh, you know fate and we were talking about destiny what we believe what it's all about you know she's 15 so i was talking about it in the class and we talked about it at home and one of the the things that came up was if you don't have any hope or if you don't have you know any anything to look forward to or anything to look towards, then you lose and all your power is taken away from you because you feel like you, you know, you're just stuck, mm -hmm. right? So when we say, I'm going to do, and it's all about I, 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 then there is no we, and we take away their power and they look to us as coaches like, you need to fix me. Yeah, yeah. You need to yeah. fix me, right? <laughs> and that's not what we do. Exactly. <laughs> uh <-huh. Thank> you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, no, I'm not here to fix you. You yeah. know, uh, we all know we can't change people. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's the willingness and the work that to be put in by you. But every team, every successful person I know has and or have had coaches up the wazoo. Yeah. And so we all know the purpose of a coach, but. I think it's a matter of letting people know you have power. Nobody is taking it away from you. You have the option. You have the choice to do X, Y, Z. I can sit here and try to coach you all day long, but if you're not going to do anything different, then what's the point? Yeah. One, you're wasting money. Two, you're wasting my and your time. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and I think somebody said earlier, you have to be ready mm -hmm. in, order, in order to take their route. But... Yeah, so it's all about that power. So I, I, yeah, I love that approach because it puts the, it puts the power back in their hands, and I think that can be motivational in and of itself. Yes. You know, yes. you don't have to look outside to get what you need. You already have it. Maybe somebody is just here to help you pull it out a little bit, a little bit more. Yes. Yes. And it's so it, it's affirming to like. When you when they start to do things, when we're coaching with people and we're working with people and they start to make decisions and then they see themselves flourish from those decisions, then it's affirming, right? They they feel better about themselves. They feel stronger about themselves because they found that within themselves. But if, yep. if I'm telling you to do it and then you do it, then you praise me. You look to exactly. me. It becomes a codependent relationship yeah. because like oh ivy changed my life or oh keisha changed my life and then the minute that the um the coaching program is over then you're right back to the exact same space exactly, exactly. Of thinking that you can't do it or what do i do now and then you need to go to someone else and it becomes this perpetual um cycle of being dependent on other people to solve your problems so when you said that i had to oh yes i felt that <laughs> Giving them power because, yes, like the most rewarding, and I don't even want to use the word flattery, I want to say rewarding 
thing and beautiful thing is to finish with the client and they be able to go forward and flourish and practice those things, whatever they've discovered during that coaching yeah. session on their own. And they continue to evolve, you know? Yes. Yeah. I agree. And yes, um, as coaches, I love to say radical selfie. So I don't want to say that. <laughs> Akila, I'm sorry, Akila, AKA radical selfie says as coaches, we have to know how not to enable and okay think about this too we're talking about wellness which means all the areas of our lives this goes over into every other area not just nutrition diet and yes. fitness and that stuff we're talking about becoming if you are becoming in uh if you if we allow them to be powerless how does that show up the, in the other areas of their lives, in their mm -hmm. jobs, in their work, in their business, in their relationships? Oh, my God, that's a whole nother subject. Right. <laughs> and their relationships are, you know, those types of people end up being codependent on their spouses yeah. and, and boyfriends, girlfriends and even kids or parents and all that stuff. So all of this is intertwined and, and related. And I think once we start working on little by little, mm -hmm. Sean said earlier, as we start working on some of this stuff, all areas of our lives become more expansive and powerful and awesome <laughs> when we do that and that's what i love to look forward to yeah you may say or you may like somebody may come to you and say yeah ivy i know i need to lose 50 pounds dude how can you help me mm -hmm. and and our job one is to meet people where they are yeah right so you say okay let's let's talk about that yeah i you decided to to help me and throughout that process you are coaching me to understand you know where I am, how I got to where I are. You're, I'm, I'm answering those why questions, but then also I start to see changes, not just in this one area I came to you for, but also, you know what? Just and it's sometimes it seems like it's out of the blue. I don't know if you've gotten this before, but somebody would say, somebody came to me one time and said, you know what? Um, I their relationship with their with their teenager was horrible, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's like we're talking now. And, you know, and it, it is like because you're making changes over here, you know, mm. little do you know that your mindset is changing, your attitude towards things are changing. So then everything else in your life has an opportunity to grow and change as well. Yes, ma'am, Akila, everything is connected. <laughs> yes. yes, that's the holistic thing, right? The holistic, that's the holistic to holistic. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> A complete, yes, J. Jones, a complete transformation. That's what I want for me and anybody else I'm around. Yeah, yeah. And I've had that happen myself in, you know, because I believe in coaches should be coached. And mm -hmm. is that, um, you know, you go starting out with one thing or one, one area and you're like, I need to work on this or whatever. And you end up way over here or something totally different you know um even myself in health challenges that i've experienced and then i find found out that okay this health challenge over here is has a total metaphysical connection to um you know being muted over here or not being creative or you know it, it's like it's a lot of times you think oh tell me what i should eat or tell me how many hours a day i should work out to fix this when it's um no you actually might need to you know, that they talk and find out that they need more self-care or yeah, they need exactly. to go have a conversation with that person they've been avoiding for 20 years. Yeah. And yeah. that releases healing in a physical area, you know. Yeah. So if as coaches and this goes back to the coaching rather than training, if as coaches, we just set down, sit this um, curriculum over there, we get to everybody and say, oh, you have that problem? Then take these vitamins and do this and not, and that will <laughs> solve it for you. Then that person never gets to their truth of mm -hmm. where they really need the healing. And the healing might not be about the food or the vitamins or, or five glasses of water a day. It might just be about self-care or or a spiritual ritual that they need to do or whatever they find and we don't know that i'm the first to tell my clients i don't know i'm yeah. here to just coach you to getting to that point you have the answers but um one thing i do want to ask you and um 
Akilah could probably speak on this too. Have you found that there's resistance sometimes because we are breaking the rules in wellness that a lot of times clients aren't used to that and they do, you know, people, people do want you to fix it. So it's hard for them to get past that space of you being the fixer. Yes. Um, now, I think there are some things we can do. And there's that beautiful face. <laughs> <laughs> that question was so powerful. I was like, oh, my God, let me try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did. I'm well, glad you did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, to, to answer you really quickly, Ivy, yes, um, there is. There is, even with ourselves, we know that there's going to be resistance. I mm -hmm. think um, we can, our jobs is to learn to be more intuitive and understanding who we can help because we can't help everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, who, who can we help? So when we're talking to people and are, you know, pre-working with them, are these the type of people that when we're talking about the things that we're looking to help them with, or do they even seem resistant? in those meetings or in those conversations. Uh, that's what I try to do. And okay. even if we are mm -hmm. working together, then if it comes on later down the line, it's a reevaluation. Are you still ready? Are you still ready to move? Are you still committed to this? And if not, take a step back, you know, <laughs> do what you need to do and then come back later when you are absolutely ready to do that little by little. Yeah, yeah. We're going back to that little by little. The shine, shine gave us some dialogue. I know, right? <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> I love that. Um, can y'all hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. I love that you asked that question, Ivy, because I think it's also like backing up a little bit from the person being coached to the coach herself or himself we have to recognize all of those things apply to us as coaches too. So to be compassionate, to ask ourselves why we're doing it so that we are not enabling it so that we're recognizing what type of clients we're, we're working with. Because as a coach, you'll beat yourself up not being able to get somebody the result. As you said, Gisha, it really is about the result. It's about reminding a person how to tap into whatever it is that is costing them or the thing that can heal them. And we can't do that if we're trying to be the coach who has 15 clients in 15 days with 15 <laughs> sets of results around these things. It just doesn't work like that. So one of the major things is that when you look for a coach, look at somebody who doesn't have that formulaic thing, You know, especially if you're talking about something like wellness. You should be looking for somebody who's really talking to the person that you are and is willing to mentor you. As somebody says in here, it's a mentorship in a yep. sense. For a journey that you have committed to a journey that you have committed to and that coach is now going to be a mirror mm -hmm. and a bit of a pusher you know whatever it is that you're going to need in that moment as opposed to somebody's like but remember you said you was going to do this and now you didn't do it so you failed you know it that's that happens a lot in coaching i know when i started i was that coach i felt bad if i couldn't get someone the result they said they wanted yeah yeah, but what about the process? What about the journey? What about what's eating at you? Why you're not doing the things you're, you want to do? Why you don't feel how you want to feel? That, that's the work. Boom. Yeah. That's Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things that, um, and this might be familiar to you, um, Keisha, because we both went to the same coaching school, was that um, we were taught to um, detach from the outcome. And um, that means on both sides of the table. So if, like you're saying, Akilah, if, if a client does not have um, certain results or whatever, you're detached from that. And if they go out and they become the next less brown, then you detach from that too. Because either way, those results are not about you. You're simply holding the space for that transaction to happen and that evolution to happen for the client. But it's not about your awesome coach because you produced Iyana Van Zant, you know, from, from coaching with you, you know? And that, and that's because a lot of times, you know, we want to feel maybe the judgment or the shame around the, the client who doesn't do so well, but we also want to feel the pride and, and take ownership of 
the kind who does awesome. And it's like either way, you have to detach from the outcome and just do your job. And that's not an easy thing because ego wants to say, look, she coached with me and she's the y'all advanced that now. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna need one of you guys to coach me to be the next. That's the so next true. Over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because either way, we're doing our work, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank. Oh. Um. Oh, thank you, uh, Jay Jones, for joining us tonight. We appreciate you. Yes. Thanks um, for stopping by. Yes. Yes. We look forward to seeing you again. Our normal, this isn't our normal week. Normally we are, what, first and third Wednesdays uh, at 8 Central. So be sure to come back again. We're always going to be talking about stuff. Let us know what you want to see, uh, what questions or I issues, ideas, what have you. And then come in and join us. We got some open seats available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are always open to the interaction, and that's what we crave on. So um yeah thank you all right it is 50 after the hour we talked about some things uh in ways of how we are redefining wellness coaching in general some things that we are doing what we like to see what issues people are having a lot in, in the wellness industry from the coach perspective as well as the client perspective as well um Good conversation. I like the fact that we were talking about your five C's <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and some things that you know people can do um, for themselves. And I'm loving that we talked about giving people back their power. Yeah. Not not. I mean, they may have. It's still there, but it's you know we want to redirect that energy. Um, another thing, one more thing that I wanted to bring up too before we close for the night is energy management. And I think this is going to be in all of what we do. Um, one of the things that I like to work with people on is energy, energy management. Energy is everywhere. And, you know, I work more with solopreneurs and business owners and, you know, uh, mostly female. And a lot of times it's, I don't have the energy to, you know, do what I want to do. I'm burnt out. I'm, you know, I'm not taking care of myself. And so how can I do these things? How can I go work out? How can I, you know, make sure I'm, I'm prepping my meals? How, you know, how can I make sure that I'm serving my, my boo, you know, whatever, how can I do that? If I'm, you know, if I'm blabbed out, I yeah. can't. And so as I like to tackle things from a focus of energy. And I think that's another way that I, help break a few rules and redefine a little wellness here and there because if we don't have energy to do anything, nothing is going to be successful. Right. In my opinion. I, yeah, you know, I love that phrase. This is, like, uh, this has become my second. <laughs> after you gave me that phrase, I use it all the time. <laughs> I tell people, look, this, I'm about my energy management. And I, I don't have the energy for that. Or I only have, <laughs> this is my new <laughs> phrase now, I'm telling you. It has already revolutionized my life. I'm like, <laughs> my energy management is, is You see it though, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I see it. I'm like, yeah, that's because that's what it's about. And I can relate to it because being an entrepreneur who prioritizes wellness, and when you said energy management, that, that just, articulates it perfectly for me yeah. that it you know the choices that i make and the things that i do i only have a certain amount of a lot of energy a day yeah. <laughs> and sometimes in a moment and mm -hmm. you know i have to make my decision and say i just don't have the energy for all of that right now so some, exactly. you know that phrase one gotta go on a, on a social media <laughs> it's like one gotta go you got three things here one gotta go because not enough energy to manage all three so you gotta choose exactly so, <laughs> i love that exactly. <laughs> well yeah i mean you know it's just all about what we're focusing on yeah yeah what we're focusing on i know um shine says emotional intelligence is key as well yes mm -hmm. all of this Man, I'm telling you, everything is so interconnected. Um, I remember the example I was going to use about energy is 
when I used to work downtown, I used to commute downtown, you know, all the restaurant stuff down there. When I first started working, I was what, 20 something. I was, you know, making a good little amount of change. So I'm going out to eat every single day. Mm -hmm. Not only am I being financially irresponsible by doing that from my point of view, but secondly, eating these meals like that during the middle of the day, what happens in the afternoon? Of course, I am not productive. Yeah. I am not you know, worrying about what my, you know, I'm not doing my job as effective as I could and I'm getting sleepy and it's like, okay, I need to do something different. So I need to watch what I'm doing midday, you know, so that I can produce the rest of the day and then go on about my business. That's just one. I just, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, get itis at work, not going to work. <laughs> so that's one way that I was mismanaging my energy. The time didn't go anywhere. Time is still going to flop. Yeah. It's still going to be, I have to work, right? I have to be there till whatever time. Time is there. Yeah. But I didn't have the energy to actually produce. Yeah. So that's another, you know, that's a, it's impertinent that we, it's pertinent that we have to think about that as well. It all, it's all related, man. <laughs> yes. And the, yeah. and the even better thing is when we, um, you know, I, I use the phrase return on investment, but when we invest our energy into something that's going to produce more energy, that's even better, right? Because it's like, bam, it's like a um, video yes. game. Like, you know, you eat the little mushroom, boom, 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 you're bigger. So it's like, you know, <laughs> if you're talking about energy management and you make the choice to, okay, I'm going to take a short nap and now I have more energy to do more. Things. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. it's awesome. I vibe with it. I vibe with it. Um, awesome. So I guess where I put the links um, for those of you who are watching the replay and watching the video, you can find us on chat and you.com. And that will always have um, the updates of the, the past video and then our upcoming show. It will keep you um, updated with that. And um, it also has our individual websites. Um, which I put the link in the chat as well for those of you that are in the chat room. And um, you can contact us there. So if you have something that you want us, like Keisha said, that you want us to talk about, leave us a message and um, we'll add it on to our schedule and come in and chat with you all about it. Awesome. Thank you guys who joined us tonight. We truly appreciate you. Yes, thank you everybody for chatting with us and hanging out. And um, if you know anyone, the replay will be available. So um, we'll put that out. Um, if anybody missed it, but you know someone who definitely can benefit from hearing this or um, who wanted to see it, but they couldn't be here tonight, they can catch the replay and catch all of this. Awesome. All of the awesomeness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all the awesomeness. <laughs> All right, all right, Ivy. Till next time, we will see you guys soon. And uh, toodles. Thank you all for coming.